Welcome to our lecture online. Um, among the most predominant features of the planet Mars are the volcanoes. They are by far the largest volcanoes to be found anywhere in the solar system. They are the largest mountains to be found anywhere in the solar system. Now, what are these? Well, they are primarily the big plate volcanoes. Now, there's probably hundreds of volcanoes on Mars, but there's about a half a dozen or so that are just extremely unusual because of their size. So let's take a look and see where we can find them. Well, first of all, we have some volcanoes right here near the Tarsus region. We have the three what we call the Tarsus volcanoes. Then we have the largest or at least tallest volcano of all of them, Olympus Mons, and the largest volcano in the solar system, Alba Mons, formerly known as the Alba Patera. Now, on the other side of the planet over here, we have Elysium Mons with two smaller side companion volcanoes, Hectates and Albor. So what are these? Well, they're primarily what we call shield or plate volcanoes. They're volcanoes that have been in the same location relative to the surface or relative to the crust of the, uh, of the planet in such a way that they stay over the same hot spot for millions, perhaps hundreds of millions or even billions of years. In other words, the place where the crust is thin enough for lava to come through is at the same location. There's no tectonic plate movement, so lava flow will continue at the same location for a very long time, many, many millions of years, and therefore building up the volcano over the years to higher and higher heights. The second reason why the volcanoes are so tall on Mars is because of the lower gravity. It's a smaller terrestrial planet. There's not a much, as much gravity. The volcanoes don't weigh as much and don't get pushed into the crust so they're able to build up the higher heights before the enormous weight starts pushing them down. So those two reasons, we that those are the two reasons why we find these enormous volcanoes on the planet Mars. Now these three volcanoes right here, they're almost on a straight line. They're on top of the highest plateau region in Mars that varies in height from about, uh, it's about four, five, six to about almost 10 kilometers above what we call sea level. And on top of that, we have those three very large volcanoes, Arzia with the largest caldera of about 350 miles across, and they're, uh, they're in height vary from about 14 to 18 kilometers. Now, that depends upon, of course, what the relative initial height is started from. We take the lowest elevation on Mars and compare the height of these volcanoes to the lowest elevation over here, and that's why they have a height of about 14 to 18 kilometers. But if you do it relative to what we call the datum, the datum is what we call the presumed sea level of Mars. Of course, it's no longer an ocean, so we don't have a sea level. But if you assume the sea level, kind of the average height of the planet, then they only stick about 6 to 10 kilometers above that average height. Now, that's still pretty tall, considering that Mount Everest is 9,000 meters or 9 kilometers above sea level. Olympus Mons is the highest mountain with a height of 21 kilometers above Datum, or known to be 27 kilometers above the lower elevations of the planet. Again, depends upon what reference point you want to use. So if we take this reference point, then the height is about 15 or 16 miles, roughly three times the height of Mount Everest. Now, these volcanoes are not typically what you expect to see. Let's say you, you see this enormous, you think that you can walk to the foot of this volcano, look up and see this enormously tall mountain. The problem is these volcanoes are enormously large in size. The diameter of the Olympus Mons volcano is 550 kilometers, it's more than 300 miles. It basically would cover the state of Montana if you were to put it right on top of the United States. <clears throat> can you imagine a single mountain that is big as as big as the state of Montana. And then Alba Mons, which is the biggest volcano, is about a thousand kilometers across, which is probably bigger than the state of Texas. So you can imagine these are enormously large volcanoes, but you wouldn't be able to see them as these very tall mountains, because if you're at the foot of the mountain, the top of the mountain would be 100, 200 miles away, and you probably wouldn't even be able to see it unless there was clear vision to it. The slopes are very shallow. Now, the slope of Olympus Mons is about 4 to 5 degrees. So you can basically just kind of walk up at a very gentle angle. You could drive up if you have a good vehicle. And if the terrain wasn't too rough, it wouldn't really be that steep of a slope. Alba Pantera, or Alba Mons, 
that has even a lower slope of about 0.5 degrees. It's not a very tall mountain, it's only about 3 kilometers or 2 miles high, but it's 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers across, so it's a very gentle slope. You would almost wouldn't even realize you're walking up a mountain as you're walking towards the very top of the mountain. That's how shallow that grade is. On the other side, we have the other very big uh, volcano, Elysium Mons, which is about 375 kilometers across, which is about, mm, I'd say about 250 miles or close to that, eh, a little bit less, about maybe 230 miles across, and 14 kilometers high. So 14 kilometers, we'll put it at about 9 miles high. Again, much taller than Mount Everest and much larger in size. Now, what's an interesting comparison if you come to Olympus Mounds, Notice that the volume of the mountain is a hundred times the volume of Mauna Loa, which is the largest volcano or the largest mountain on the earth. If we think about it, starting from the bottom of the seafloor up to the top of the mountain is the largest mountain on earth, and yet Olympus Mountains has about a hundred times the volume of that particular mountain. Now, what's also interesting about this mountain, and here is the beautiful picture of uh, Mount Olympus, Notice you can see a very definitive edge right here. In other words, the mountain starts from the floor of the valley and first has these very steep scarps that go up anywhere from four to eight kilometers. Once you get to the top of that, then it's a very gentle slope to the very top. It gets a little bit steeper towards the caldera at the very top. The caldera at the top is about 80 kilometers in diameter, or about 50 miles across. So you'd almost have to be a, a mountain climber, a rock climber to get first across the edge here on top of that and then of course the rest of the way you would simply just walk. It'd be a long walk, you better bring a lot of oxygen with you because it would take you quite a, quite a long time to climb to the bottom, to the top I should say, of the mountain. So otherwise, besides those very big volcanoes, notice I've made a lot of dots right here. There's just a lot of, a lot of volcanoes throughout that region. Those volcanoes are a little bit different in nature. They're called Toli volcanoes or Pateras. So the reason why they're different is, first of all, the Toli volcanoes, they're more dome-shaped. And they do have a steeper slope. So they look a little bit more like the volcanoes you see on Earth. They're a little bit steeper and they're a little bit more dome-shaped. Also, the calderas at the top tend to be larger relative to the size of the mountains. They're not nearly as tall as the other big volcanoes. And the pateras, they appear as very shallow edge craters. In other words, when we first saw pictures of them, we didn't even realize they were volcanoes. We thought they might just be impact craters. But upon further study of the pictures and getting high-resolution pictures, we began to realize that these are also volcanoes. Now, why do they look like shallow edge craters? It's because this region has been built up over the hundreds of millions and billions of years with a lot of volcanic activity. And the lava flows tend to bury from the big, bigger volcanoes, tend to bury these smaller volcanoes so that only the very top of the volcano stick out of the lava flows that have basically submerged them to a large extent. So this entire region right here has been built up, first of all, initially, through, of course, the internal movement of the planet, and then, later on, additional lava flows have covered probably many kilometers thick regions in that particular highland. Now, it's an interesting question to wonder why most of the volcanoes are in this region right here. Why we see far fewer volcanoes in this region or closer to the poles. A reason for that may be because most of these volcanoes are indeed very, very old. We're talking about billions of years old. Only Olympus Mons is thought to have more recent activity. And of course, when we talk more recent activity, we may talk about 100 million years ago, and may even think that as little as 10 million years ago, this mountain may have seen some activity. But by and large, most of these other mountains saw their volcanic activity many billions, well, not many, but potentially billions of years ago. So the question is, why would that be? Well, there's two reasons for that. One reason, you see this top region right here? This is the more, this has a younger surface than the bottom region. We believe that the top region of Mars has been hit by a very large object, kind of like a Pluto-sized object, impacted during the heavy bombardment, made an enormous impact into this. Now, we're not sure if it came in at a glancing blow or a direct blow, but it did cause enormous damage to the top, probably completely melted the top region, reformed it into what it is today. And when that surface, of course, the crust was then still very 
thin and very porous and not very strong, it hadn't solidified, we probably ended up with a lot of volcanic activity due to the heat that was built up in the planet and still able to get through the thinner crust that was formed by the enormous impact. We don't see that down here where the crust is much older, shows a lot more crater impact, so we realize that that wasn't destroyed like the top part of the planet by that really big impact. And so it seems to make sense that you would expect to see volcanoes along this region that was uh, subject to that enormous bombardment. So I think I covered most of what we have here about the, about the uh, volcanoes. Uh, they are definitely interesting. They're very different. We don't see anything like this anywhere else in the solar system. And primarily because, first of all, it's a terrestrial planet. It had a molten interior. The interior, to some extent, is probably still molten towards the inside. Uh, or pliable at the very least, but it's so much smaller that it doesn't build up the heat like Venus and Earth, which are much bigger planets and therefore still have more recent volcanic activity. So the crust is thicker, the chance of magma moving from the hotter interior of the planet towards the surface is much less likely to occur. And so that's why there still could be current volcanic activity at times, Perhaps Mount Olympus, if we find that it has erupted maybe as, as, as recent as 10 million years ago, that it's very possible that it might do so again. But I wouldn't sit there waiting for it to happen in your lifetime. It may not happen for another 10 million years or so, or even longer. So don't sit around and wait for another volcanic activity on the, on the planet Mars. But that's the history and the interesting facts about those fantastic mountains on Mars. Well, I think that's uh, where a bunch of people get together and go, where do you think we should put the sea level? <laughs> I, I don't think it's a scientific thing. Um, they probably, they do know the, the altitude of the planet, on the whole planet, everywhere. So they have very good measurements using a laser and altimeter. They've been able to measure very accurately the entire planet. And they probably took kind of an average and they said, we'll take the average and maybe go... Um, well, yeah, maybe they took the average, maybe they went a, a one kilometer below, or one kilometer above the average. I don't know for sure how they did it, but it was just basically a, an agreement, say, let's put it right here, let's make it the average elevation of the planet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would be interesting to, to think, though, when there were oceans, and we do believe there were oceans on Mars a long time ago, where they would have been, and this is the low-lying area of Mars, so we assume that this is where the, the ocean and the sea would have been, and that this would primarily have been the big continent, except right here, we have the Hellos Basin, where we had an enormous impact, and then we have another impact right here, where we probably had big lakes and an ocean there, one back in the days when Mars was wet. So their land mass is quite different than the Earth's land mass. Their land mass is mostly on the bottom half, the southern half. Yes, that's true. For the Earth, most of the land mass is on the northern hemisphere. On Mars, most of the so-called land mass is on the southern hemisphere, of course. Yeah, but it's also, you have the continents here. It's like one big continent. Yes, uh, we don't have any tectonic plate movement. So there's no movement of the land masses on Earth. They're always moving around. So even though they're in the, primarily in the northern hemisphere today, that means 100, 200, 300 million years from now, they may be mostly in the southern hemisphere. We don't know. They're moving around. On Mars, you don't have that. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, uh, it would have been interesting to see Mars with oceans on it. 